Harvest finally released a new permanent game mode involving combat. After playing through and extensively testing the mechanics and gameplay, let us discuss and review the new Imaginarium Theater. To start, I want to analyze what we knew before July 1st from the special program and official info slash infographics. First, the three element restriction. Automatically the dumbest idea they've come up with. Straight up being locked out of a portion of your roster because they're not the right element? Cool. I wouldn't be surprised if this alone automatically turns people away from bothering with this content. Next, we have three levels of difficulty. It appears to scale up proportionally at a quick glance. I already plan to go straight to hard difficulty and my talking points will be from that. Oh, it requires 18 characters at level 70 minimum in order to start the challenge. For those who have been playing since launch and already have a large bowl of built characters, because there's nothing else to do. It is manageable. However, I can't imagine how newer players feel about this. Yes, you don't have to do the hard difficulty right away and the first time rewards are not going anywhere. I'll even list this in-game goal of beating hard difficulty for the first time as a positive since it does give players something to do and work towards eventually. However, keep in mind by the time you finish grinding and building more characters, the elements in future seasons will be a different combination. Secondly, I don't know about you, but being forced to build more characters, potentially ones you don't like playing just to be able to try this, kind of sucks. It's starting to feel more like a desperate attempt to encourage more pulling, Hoyoverse is really living up to their commitment to not add excessive anxiety for their players. Yes, I understand this is a gotcha, but I firmly believe there is a difference in setting that expectation since the beginning of the game versus implementing that years later for who knows what reason. We can only speculate. I think the devs have put a bit of thought into that because you can use six opening characters regardless of if you own them or not. A selection of one of four guest characters that are the exception to the element restriction and the ability to borrow one character from your friends list. However, from what I can tell, you you have to own the guest characters in order to use them. There is no offer trial version, so I'll have to penalize Hoyoverse for that. However, the guest characters can also be borrowed from your friends list, showing up as the one supporting cast character. So for hard difficulty, the worst case scenario is you need to have 12 other characters built or 11 if you borrow one from a friend. Still an insane barrier of entry in my opinion. You might be wondering, why does this require so many characters in the first place? One word, Vigor System. Each character can only be used in battle twice and that's it. The only way I have found that you can use a character who has their Vigor depleted is through these two random mystery cache events. <sighs> I am glad the devs decided to take something from past events that no one liked and made it a core feature. As far as first impressions go, not looking great in my opinion, but what about after actually playing? I apologize in advance for my awful gameplay, I have been on hiatus from Genshin for the past month so I hope this is not too painful to watch. One, I thought it was cool how much planning and strategy this has right off the bat. As long as you have enough Fantasia flowers, you can keep selecting buffs for wondrous boons, companions, or mystery caches. Eventually, you'll have to do a combat related stage to get more flowers and progress. Each one has its own challenges that you can preview beforehand. The main one is usually to kill enemies. There's a star challenge and a bonus challenge that has a specific action slash elemental reaction condition you can do. Second, you are always forced to use a team of four. There's no outsmarting the system by using less to optimize your character usage. Granted, in hard mode, there are only eight fights and each character can be used twice. So you actually only need to use 16 out of your 18 characters. There is that little bit of a buffer. Personally, I still hate this. Thank you for ruining potential fun challenge ideas, Hoyoverse. Yes, you really don't want more videos on this. Each stage you clear also grants you one of your alternate characters, so I recommend choosing the companion event only if you need a new full team of four. Stars from the star challenge are for bragging rights. It does not affect your run for your primo gem rewards. I found out in my second run trying to limit test if you can get away with no artifacts equipped on your alternate characters. The moment you fail to clear within the time of the star challenge, the game straight up starts killing your active character. There's no dodging since it's an effect placed directly on you. It looks like shields did block the damage, but eventually it'll scale up and you will not be able to outheal it. I think this only applies to certain stages because I wasn't punished for it in a later boss fight. 
I didn't realize this till reviewing my run in the Protect the Monolith level. Your time is reduced for every kill. I was so confused how I didn't kill 18 opponents. You can see how quickly my time went down in the last bid because I took way too long on this stage. I want to say with this being called endgame content and the sheer amount of built characters required, it sets an expectation, intentional or not, that this would be somewhat challenging. The enemies are level 90 to 95 throughout, but I believe they don't have the 200% HP scaling as Spiral Abyss does. I would say the most challenging part is making the best of whatever team comp you can manage with the Vigor system. Although I suppose some will find it fun, it's up to personal preference. Even with the most janky team comps, I think as long as your characters have decent enough stats on your builds, and your most important talents are at level 8, I think in general you'll be okay. If I had to give any general tips regardless of difficulty, I'd say try and prioritize your best DPS and supports for the second and third boss fights. Use the characters you're unfamiliar with or don't enjoy playing early on just to get them out of the way. If you don't need the companion events, I'd say pick at least one Wondrous Boon event before each stage. I didn't see any that were game breaking, but any buff is better than none. As far as I can tell, your characters are healed to full with ultimates charged every time they enter a stage, so you can prioritize saving your healers or shielders for the boss fights if you want. Once you're able to do hard mode, that's it. There's almost no replayability outside of waiting for the next season. That's a little weird to me because this does feel like a roguelike mode. If you want to argue the only replayability is for the achievements, sure. The special poses, which is what you use your toy medals on, there's nothing wrong with fun little free cosmetics. My criticism is after collecting the seasonal rewards, which is the only way you can get toy medals, you can't get all the poses. Yes, maybe the number of players who want them all are in the minority. Most will likely just prioritize their favorite characters first, but I feel being able to get them all by doing multiple runs would add to replayability. If they only add on new poses instead of rotating them every season, then this is fine. I don't believe that was ever said in official media. Some small notes, the overall aesthetic is really nice. I think it's the best part of Imaginarium Theater. You do get a month to complete this at any time instead of the two week Spiral Abyss used to have. It gives you a bit more time to build up some characters if needed. All you need to do to collect your precious Primo Gem rewards is clear the stages. I didn't do this, but whenever you enter a combat stage, you can restart the stage and it doesn't impact your vigor use, or you can rewind to after the previous boss stage if you realize I needed this character way more for this battle, but I already used them up. I will give them a positive point for that because that is a nice forgiving feature for casuals. Lastly, Wolfie. I mean, I can't hate on this guy. He's adorable. Overall, once you get past that insane barrier of entry for hard mode, it's a fun addition to the game. I just wish there was more to do and try out, you know? Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you love Imaginarium Theater? Do you hate it? What would you like to see the dev team do to improve on it? Best of luck to everyone. I'm Dragon Lolita. Until then, on to my next video.